Welcome to 14.1. Okay, we're going to start out by stating some things that we already know. 1 over sine x is also known as cosecant of x. 1 over cosine x is also known as secant of x. And 1 over tangent x is also known as cotangent of x. Okay, so these are going to become the basis for a lot of what we're doing in this first section. So these, I'm going to highlight those. Those are important. Okay. Uh, cosecant of x, since cosecant x is 1 over sine x, we could say 1 over sine x. We could also say that sine x is equal to 1 over cosecant of x. Because sine x and cosecant x are reciprocals of each other, so each one is equal to 1 over the other. Secant x is 1 over cosine x, so therefore we could say cosine x is 1 over secant x. Cotangent x is is 1 over tangent x. So we can also say that tangent x is 1 over cotangent of x. And because of this, we've got sine x times cosecant x. We can simplify that. Okay, So we could say sine x. We can leave sine x alone and multiply that by cosecant of x. But cosecant of x we know is 1 over sine x. So we can rewrite that as 1 over sine x. The sine x on the top and the sine x on the bottom cancel, and we get 1. Okay? This also works. Any two functions or any two expressions that are reciprocals of each other, if you multiply them together, you will get 1. Okay? So cosine x times secant x, well, that's cosine of x. Let's get both of these in terms of cosine x. Secant x is 1 over cosine x. Um, the cosines cancel, and you get 1, and that's because cosine x and secant x are reciprocals of each other. Same with tangent x and cotangent of x. They're reciprocals of each other. So if we get them both in terms of tangent, we've got tangent x times 1 over tangent x. Those cancel, we get 1. Okay. Um, the quotient properties. Um, we can say that tangent x is equal to, you know, in the unit circle. Actually, we'll come down here. I'll start to draw the unit circle. If you were to draw the unit circle, unit circle, the radius is 1. So any point on the unit circle would be x comma y. Drop your altitude. If this is your angle x, um, let's call it theta. Just not to get it confused with that x. Be careful. Sometimes this is called x, but don't get it confused with the x value, uh, the coordinate of your point on the unit circle. Okay. Um, but this is x and y and 1. So we could say the cosine of x is equal to, or the cosine of theta is equal to x over 1. The sine of theta is equal to y over 1. And the tangent of theta is equal to the y over the x. Same way we can say secant of theta is equal to 1 over the x. Uh, cosecant of theta is equal to 1 over the y. And cotangent of theta is equal to the x over the y, okay? So tangent of your angle is equal to the sine of your angle over the cosine of your angle because tangent is equal to the y over the x. Well, the y is the sine x and the x is the cosine x. So you can say tangent of theta is equal to y over x, but y is equal to sine x. And x is equal to cosine x, or cosine x. Let's call these thetas, just not to get them confused. Even though that theta is just a variable, and oftentimes we use x for that. So if your angle is x instead of theta, you can say tangent of x is equal to sine x over cosine x, because we just showed tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. Cotangent of x is the reciprocal, so that's going to be cosine of x over sine of x. Okay, these are two more of your properties that are going to be super important. Okay? So right now we've got these five identities, one, two, three, four, five, and at the bottom of the page we're going to have a few more. Okay? Um, and let's see, down here. If we take this down here, cosine squared of our angle plus sine squared of our angle is equal to 1. Okay? Um, well, where this comes from is this thing. 
we know that this triangle right here, we got x squared plus y squared equals 1, simply the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so from the circle above, we can say that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Well, our x value is cosine squared theta. Our y squared is sine squared theta. And that's equal to 1. So sine, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. If we call this variable x instead of theta, you can call it whatever you want. We've got this identity right here. So cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. Okay, That is our next big identity. Okay, that's a big one we will use quite a bit for the next couple chapters. Okay, And then this one where this comes from, it starts with this thing right here. Cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. If you take this equation that we just proved and we divide both sides by cosine squared x, Well, this is cosine squared x over cosine squared, so that's simply 1. That's sine squared x over cosine squared x. Well, sine over x, sine x over cosine x is tangent of x. Sine of your angle over cosine of your angle is tangent of your angle. And that comes from here. If we squared both sides of this, we'd have tan squared x equals sine squared x over cosine squared x. So sine squared x over cosine squared x is simply tan squared x. And then 1 over cosine x from up here, we know 1 over cosine x is secant x. So if we square both sides, we'd have 1 over cosine squared x equals secant squared x. So 1 over cosine squared x is secant squared x. Okay, that's our next big identity. Oops, sorry. 1 over cosine squared x is secant squared x. Okay, and finally, the last one, if we again take this over here, rewrite it over here, and we've got cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. If we, instead of dividing both sides by cosine squared x, we divide both sides by sine squared x. Well, cosine x over sine x, we know up here is cotangent x. So squaring both sides, you'd have cotangent squared x equals cosine squared x over sine squared x. Cosine squared x over sine squared x is going to be cotangent squared x. Um, sine squared x over sine squared x is 1. Let's move my picture a little bit out of the way. Um, equals, and then 1 over sine squared x, maybe not that much, <laughs> uh, is going to be 1 over sine x, we know is over here, cosecant x. So 1 over sine squared x is cosecant squared x. So that's going to be cosecant squared x. And that is our third one. Okay, that's what this thing says. Okay. Now we're going to take these and we're going to use these um, to solve these cool little problems. Okay. So these are, you could call them identities, you can call them proofs, you can call them show that this equals this, transform this to this. Um, use the trigonomic identities, and the trigonomic identities are these things that we highlighted. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then there's variations of all of them. Actually, I'm going to show you something here. If we take this one, there's some variations. If we want to get the cosine squared x by itself, that would equal to be equal to 1 minus sine squared x. In the same way, if we wanted to get the sine squared x by itself, that would be equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. Okay, I'm not going to highlight these two. These are really variations of this. Okay? And same with up here. If you wanted to get the tangent squared x by itself, you could say tangent squared x equals secant squared x minus 1, and so on and so forth. Okay. Or if you wanted to get the 1 by itself, you could say 1 equals secant squared x minus tan squared x. 
and so on. Same thing over here. You could get the cotangent squared x by itself. And you'd have cosecant squared x minus 1. Okay, you might be thinking, what the heck is all this for? Well, we're going to use these identities, all the things that we've highlighted, on this next page to prove these. Um, use the trig identities and your knowledge of reciprocal trig functions to transform the following. Okay, let's see if that's going to um, adjust good. Uh, rule of thumb. R rule of thumb, okay, there's no one thing that works for every one of these problems, okay? But oftentimes, one of the things you can try is get everything in terms of sine or cosine, or sine and cosine. Substitute the trig identities where appropriate. So what we're doing here, we're transforming this expression on the left side to this. So we don't touch this one. We just modify this and show that this is actually equal to this. Okay. So if we look at our rule of thumb, we're going to start out cosecant of x. Well, we know that cosecant x is the reciprocal of sine x. So we can rewrite cosecant x as 1 over sine x. That's multiplied by tan x. Well, if we get tan x in terms of sine x and cosine x, tan x is equal to sine x over cosine x. And multiplying these together, sine x divided by sine x is just 1. So multiplying this together, you've got 1 on the top, cosine x on the bottom. Well, 1 over cosine x, we know that that is equal to secant of x. And once this matches this, check, we're done, okay? So let's go through a few more. Let's go through, through these kind of quickly. Cosecant x, we know cosecant x is the reciprocal of sine x. We can write that as 1 over sine x. Tan x is sine x over cosine x. And cosine x, well, let's write that as cosine x over 1. And we want to show that this thing is equal to 1, okay? Well, the sine x and the sine x, sine x on top and bottom cancel because sine x divided by sine x is 1. Cosine x divided by cosine x is 1, so that cancels. So we just end up with a 1 on the top, a 1 on the bottom, which is equal to 1. Check it off because it now matches this. Okay. okay. These will get a little more challenging and a little more fun. Okay, we have sine theta plus cotangent theta times cosine theta. These two we have to multiply together before we add to this. So let's leave this as sine theta. And then plus cotangent theta, we can write as cosine theta over sine theta. And then we're multiplying by cosine theta. So let's say cosine theta over 1. Okay. So we've got sine theta plus, and that's going to be multiplying fractions, multiply across cosine squared theta over sine theta. Now, we have to combine two terms into one term, so somehow this thing has to simplify to be this. Always keep your eye. What you want to do is you want to manipulate, simplify, substitute things where you can, but always keep an eye on what's over here because ultimately you want this thing to transform to be that. Okay. Adding two terms together, knowing we have to get them equal to one single term, we have to combine these. We have to get common denominators. So our common denominator, this is a 1, this is a sine theta, is going to be sine theta. So we'll multiply this one by our clever form of 1, sine theta over sine theta. So that becomes sine squared theta over sine theta plus cosine squared theta over sine theta. So I combine these into one fraction, the same denominator. Now, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, do you remember what that's equal to? That was our big one over here. Cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. Anytime cosine squared of any angle plus sine squared of the same angle will always be equal to 1. Okay? Just depends what you're naming this angle, whether it's a x or a theta or an a or a w, whatever you want to call it. So the top, this part simplifies to 1. The bottom is sine theta. 1 over sine theta is cosecant theta. And keeping our eyes on what we wanted to get, we're there. Okay. Next question. Cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Okay, so this one, how the heck do we get that to be 1 minus 2, two sine squared x? Okay. 
So if we peruse some of our identities, some of our identities that have sine squared x and cosine squared x, it looks like this over here and maybe some of these down here, okay? Now, keeping your eye on what's over here, we don't have any cosine squared x's anymore. The cosine squared x's went away. So maybe we can substitute, get rid of this cosine squared x, turn them into sine squared x's using one of our identities. Okay, and it looks like if we can replace the cosine squared x, getting that cosine squared x by itself, meaning we have to subtract the sine squared x to the other side, we'd get this right here. Cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So let's rewrite this as 1 minus sine squared x. And then bring down the, this minus sine squared x. These are like terms. We've got two of them. So 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And that matches this. So check. We are done. Okay. Let's go to the next page. You can try this next page on your own. I will go through them all. Maybe stop the video. Try them on your own. But if you need to, go back to the video. And um, you can see how to do them if you, if you didn't quite get them or if there's one you didn't get. Okay. The nice thing about these, you pretty much know that you got it right because you know we, you want this to become... So once it becomes that, and as long as you didn't make any mistakes and accidentally get to that in another way that's not valid, you basically would have to take, like, make at least two mistakes to get over here um, if you were doing it wrong, or you just have to get do everything right. Okay. So notice this is two terms. We have secant theta minus cosine theta. We're subtracting a term from another term. This is just one term, sine theta times tangent theta. So somehow we have to combine the two terms into one term. Okay, secant theta, well, that's the reciprocal of cosine theta, so we can write it as 1 over cosine theta, and then minus cosine theta over 1. Let's get common denominators. Anytime you have to get multiple terms into one term, you have to get, often you have to get to common denominators. Okay, I don't know why this thing is actually funny. Okay, so let's get common denominators. This is going to get multiplied by cosine theta over cosine theta. So this term... They both will have a denominator of cosine theta now. And we've got 1 minus cosine squared theta. And 1 minus cosine squared theta. Well, we do have an identity, this one, with a 1 and a cosine squared theta. So if we subtract this term over, 1 minus cosine squared theta will be equal to sine squared theta. And that's kind of what we showed down here. So that 1 minus cosine squared x turns into sine squared x, meaning 1 minus cosine squared theta turns into sine squared theta over cosine theta. We've got this down to one term, which is this. Now notice we need a sine theta times a tan theta. We've got a sine theta on the top, so let's factor that out, sine theta. And that's multiplied by what's left is a sine theta over a cosine theta. Well, sine theta over cosine theta we know is equal to tangent theta. So this becomes sine theta times tan theta. And that matches this. So check, we're done. Okay. Now the next one. Now there's a couple ways you could do this. Um, first way, you could get everything into sines and cosines. I'll try to turn this in here. Notice we're turning one term one rational expression into two terms, the difference of two different terms. So somehow we have to break this apart into two terms, okay? Now, one way I said you could turn it into cosines and sines, um, but I'm going to show you a different way. And if you, no matter which way you did it, maybe try the other way also, okay? We do have an identity here with a cotangent squared theta, okay? So we get that cotangent squared x by itself, I think I did it here, cotangent squared x is equal to cosecant squared x minus 1. So I'm going to replace this thing with cosecant squared x minus 1 on the top over cosecant of x. This I can now break apart into two terms. I can do this over this, cosecant squared x over cosecant of x minus 1 over cosecant of x. If you don't really understand what I did, we basically got 
you know how if you're adding two terms to adding or subtracting two terms, if they have common denominators, you can combine them into one term with the same denominator and just take their numerators and add or subtract them, subtracting here. We're just undoing that step. We're doing that step backwards, okay? So this is equal to this. Now we have our two terms. Now we're going to hope that this simplifies to be that. Cosecant squared x over cosecant x. Well, this is cosecant x times cosecant x. One of those will cancel with this one down here, and we're just left with cosecant of x. And then 1 over cosecant x, well, cosecant and sine x are reciprocals of each other. So that's simply equal to sine x. If you don't see it, you could turn the cosecant x into 1 over sine x. 1 over 1 over sine x. Dividing fractions. Leave the top alone. Multiply by this reciprocal of the bottom. That's just equal to sine x, which is being subtracted from cosecant x. And we can check that off because that's equal to this. Okay, again, I said you could turn this all into cosines and sines. Oftentimes, and it's good to see that, oftentimes there's multiple ways to get the answer correct, as long as you're using identities that are true and that actually um, work. Okay, let's go down to these two at the bottom. Cosine theta over secant theta minus tan theta. Now, this is a little more complicated. Because you can't, over here, we were able to break apart a numerator if they have the same denominator using this rule, but it's a lot harder to break apart a denominator. Okay, you can't call this cosine theta over this minus cosine theta over this. Now, there's no mathematical operation that allows you to do that. Okay, so here's a trick I'm going to show you that you maybe wouldn't have come up with on your own. You've got a secant theta minus tan theta. Let's look over here. Notice in this one, we've got a secant squared x minus tan squared x. That's the difference of two squares. If you factor this thing, the difference of two squares, it would factor into secant x minus tan x times secant x plus tan x. And think about that difference of two squares, how that factors. Secant x minus tan x times secant x plus tan x. Okay? Here we have a secant x minus tan x. It might be nice to multiply this out by a clever form of 1, multiply top and bottom, by secant theta plus tan theta, secant theta plus tan theta. The reason I'm doing that is because, well, watch. The top, I'm going to leave the top alone for a moment, cosine theta. You could distribute it, but for the moment, I'm not going to. We don't really know if we want to distribute it or not. Sometimes one of these things will cancel with something. Sometimes it won't. Again, you don't always know. Multiplying this out, we're going to get, we have to FOIL, secant theta times secant theta is secant squared theta. Then you get secant theta times tangent theta is plus secant theta tan theta. And then you get minus secant theta tan theta. And then you're going to get plus tan squared theta. Okay, I use a little too much space. But these two, the plus, plus secant theta tan theta and minus secant theta tan theta, will cancel. So we've got cosine theta and then times secant theta plus tan theta. On the bottom, I've got secant squared theta plus tan squared theta. Oops. Once you get familiar with these identities, hopefully you'll remember that there was an identity, identity with, um, a, oh, yeah, with, with actually with secant squared theta and tan squared theta, but this we don't even, um, what do we want to do here? Let's pause this. Oh, this should be, I'm sorry, I, I, this should be a minus. Okay, that should be a minus, secant squared theta minus tan squared theta. The reason that should be minus is because when we multiply this, secant squared theta, outers and inners cancel, and this becomes minus tan squared theta. Minus theta, that should be a minus. Okay, that was a minus right there. You probably noticed that when I did it. Good thing we caught that. Okay, so now we've got this. 
okay? Um, and secant squared theta minus tan squared theta, looking at this identity right here, secant squared theta, if we subtract the tan squared theta, we're simply going to get 1. And I showed that here. Secant squared x minus tan squared x is equal to 1. So this denominator just becomes 1. So we get cosine theta times secant theta plus tan theta all over 1. When it's over 1, you don't have to divide by 1. So let's distribute this. Cosine theta times secant theta. The reason I'm distributing this is because I kept my eye on what I'm trying to make it become, and it's not that yet. Okay, so now I've got cosine theta times tan theta. Okay, now if you remember, these are reciprocals, so multiplying these together, you simply get one. I'll show that work. Cosine theta times secant theta is one over cosine theta. Boom, boom, we just get a one. That's a good sign because there's our one. Hopefully this will simplify to be sine theta. Then plus, let's leave cosine theta alone. Tangent theta, we can rewrite as sine theta over cosine theta. Cosine on the top cancels with the cosine on the bottom, and we get sine theta. So 1 plus sine theta. And now we check that off because that's equal to this. Okay. Now, let's go to the next one. There's a couple ways we can do the next one. Like I said, there's... Um, oftentimes multiple ways to do a problem. Um, but let's figure out what might be a good way to do it. I think this one, let's just turn these into sines and cosines. Kind of like that first thing that they suggested that we do. Um, we've had two terms added together and you have to turn them into this. So if we can get these into the fractions and then get common denominators and combine them, that should work. That may work. Okay, so cotangent theta I can write as cosine theta over sine theta. Then tangent theta I'm going to rewrite as sine theta over cosine theta. Now let's get common denominators. I've got a sine theta and a cosine theta, so I think a common denominator is going to be cosine theta sine theta. So this we have to multiply by cosine theta over cosine theta. This one will multiply by sine theta over sine theta. So our denominator here is cosine theta sine theta. Our denominator here is cosine theta sine theta. So we've got cosine theta sine theta on the bottom. Here cosine theta times cosine theta. We've got a cosine squared theta. Cosine. Pencil's not great. Cosine squared theta and then uh, plus sine theta times sine theta, so plus sine squared theta. Hopefully you remember cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, so we just get a 1 on the top. Cosine theta, sine theta. Now let's go back and keep an eye on what we're trying to make this become, secant theta times cosecant theta. Oh, I can rewrite this as, just split it up, 1 over cosine theta times 1 over sine theta. Because this is secant of theta, and this is cosecant of theta. You can check that off because we've gotten that to be equal. All right? And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Oops.